got very embarrassing at times. One time, press plane landed before Air Force One in some city, I can't remember, and the press was herded into a little roped off area on the tarmac. Air Force One rolls up, red carpet out, the governor, lieutenant governor, senators, congressmen, all de delegation all line up to shake the president's hand. The president comes bouncing down the steps, ignores them all, walks down the red carpet, climbs over the rope, the press area, wades through the reporters, and he's taller than all of us, and he comes over to me and he puts his arm around me and he says to all of them, I just want you to see a fine example of political reporting right here. This man has got it right. He understands what I'm trying to do in this campaign. This time I am melting into the tarmac, you know, with embarrassment. It, it is it's the way Johnson worked. Another time we're on, on the pool on Air Force One. Frank Cormier, the AP and I, longtime White House correspondent. And uh, we're traveling almost all across the country uh, diagonally that day. And Lyndon Johnson gets, says, come back to the cabin. So we go back to the cabin, and the plane takes off, and he is soaked in sweat. And uh, without any apology to us, while calling for one fresca after another from the steward, and saying to us, don't say I'm drinking bourbon or anything, it's just fresca. He, drink it, he takes off all his clothes in front of us, down to nothing, rubs himself down with the towel, and puts on a whole set of dry clothes without missing a beat in talking. I mean, he frequently did this. I mean, he'd, he'd talk to people while he was sitting on the toilet. Then he sat down on the uh, bed. I'm, Cormier's sitting there, I'm here, and the president's here. And the president had very big hands, and as he's talking, and this goes on about an hour and a half, flying across the country, he's emphasizing his points by jabbing me in the thigh like this. For weeks afterwards, I had this huge black and blue area in the thigh because he kept jabbing me like this. But his whole line was, McNeil, you don't want to be just a reporter for Huntley and Brinkley, and Cormier, you don't want to be an reporter for the Associated Press. You want to be a big executive. And you want to be an anchor man. Now, if you stick with me, I'm going to give you news before it's news, and you'll beat all those other some bitches, and you'll know. And then, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and one of the things I'm going to do, we got a water shortage in this country. Look at that down there, all that dry land. We're moving into all that arid land where we shouldn't be moving because there isn't enough water. We're going to run out of water. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the seawater and make it into fresh water. If the Israelis can do it, we can do it. We can have a society where there's enough water for everybody in this country, and you stick with me, and I'm going to tell you all. It just went on and on and on like this. Um, he, was, uh, he was blatant. That's the period when I would go to the White House on the weekends when they were back in Washington, and he'd have these briefings. He never, never stopped. He never let anybody alone. You know, he'd call them at six in the morning or whatever. I mean, I don't mean just me, but I mean reporters or, or congressmen or arms to twist, governors, whatever he wanted. It never stopped. I don't think anybody ever expended more energy on the presidency than he did. But I was there one time. We were having a press briefing in the Oval Office, and Lady Bird is sitting there. It's a Saturday afternoon, nice autumn afternoon. She's alternately looking out the window with a nice smile on her face and then turning back. And every time Johnson would say something raunchy, which was frequently, you'd look up at Lady Bird and she mysteriously had turned away and was looking out the window. Then when, he, when his, his tongue became civil again, she'd be turning back and smiling and looking at him. And that's when I heard him say for the first time, if you got those Vietnamese by, he didn't say by the balls, he said by the short and curlies the my hearts and minds will follow. And she was looking out the window and turning back and smiling. <laughs>